Dry stalks fly as tractors rattle along Brazil's sweltering sugarcane fields. They yank up the plants and truck them off to aging factories. This is the frontier of a new energy revolution, one powered by leaves, stalks, and organic waste instead of fossil fuels. It's 100% uh, renewable. So you're using, as you said, waste or biomass to produce uh, uh, a fuel. Yeah, this is to press. So you have five, João Alberto Abreu is the technology director at Raizen, the world's the biggest producer of sugar and ethanol. Their Costa Pinto mill in Sao Paulo state has been pumping it out for decades. After years of research, they now want to produce what's called cellulosic ethanol from the plant debris left in the fields and the fibrous bagasse churned out by the mill. This is the raw material, dried biomass, and this mountain is enough to fuel the cars of a small city for two months. Called a second generation biofuel, it's made from abundant renewable resources, but expensive compared to ethanol made from sugar cane and corn because it's more difficult to break down the cellulose in these plants. So it's not produced on a large scale. Raizen is hoping to change that. They're going to build a new industrial scale plant that will be completed in 2014. You can use the same supply chain that you use to bring uh, 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 the sugar cane to also bring the biomass together. So you save a lot of money integrating uh, the two plants uh, together. Brazil has a long history with ethanol fueled cars. A breakthrough came in 2003 when flex fuel cars were introduced which could switch between gas and ethanol. Lately more of a burden than a blessing for ethanol since gas prices have been kept artificially low by the government keen on controlling inflation. At Raizen, a joint venture between Royal Dutch Shell and Brazil's Cosan, they're optimistic. I'm absolutely convinced that, that we will surprise the market with how feasible, how economic we will be to produce second generation ethanol. Initially, it would be exported to the United States, which pays a premium for second generation biofuels. To meet expected demand, they want to build a total of eight plants in 10 years. But it's a race, not only in Brazil, but around the world, to be the first to produce cellulosic ethanol on a commercially viable basis. A race that could transform our fuels and double productivity in these fields, making the most of both the sugarcane and the waste. Shasta Darlington, CNN, Piracicaba, Brazil.